So, good morning. I'd like to start with the uh, online panel discussion, our presentation about opportunities for tourism in Tigray. So we're broadcasting this session from Ethiopia, from South Africa, from Germany, and from Holland. My name is Theo Nagel. I'm working for CBI, the Center of uh, uh, Importing. Sorry, <laughs> CBI, all know, known to you is the Center for Promotion of uh, Import from Developing Countries. We are partner of the Ethiopia Travel Specialist. And uh, I will tell you briefly what we're going to do. First, a brief introduction about the Ethiopian Travel Specialist as a group of endorsed tour operators. Uh, and then I would like to hand over the mic to my colleague who is doing the promotion for this uh, group of endorsed uh, specialists. Um, that is Benjamin Swak. Uh, he's going to tell you a little bit about our promotional campaign. And then we have messages from the field, from two of these Ethiopian travel specialists who are going to tell you their latest developments uh, because they have been in the north of Ethiopia. And you, go, you know, of course, that this uh, territory was in sort of, let's say, uh, out of order, uh, but fresh from the field, their, uh, their latest reports. So that's mainly the issue of our session. And if you have questions about that, then you're happy to, uh, to break in after the uh, presentation of Mark and Marco. They're happy to answer your questions. Good. Um, a brief introduction about the Ethiopian specialist, a collective of, of endorsed uh, tour operators. Um, this group of tour operators came from a training which was organized by CBI. Uh, in 2019, and uh, just before the COVID uh, pandemic started. Um, we, uh, together, they, um, they built up uh, a, a nice group. They, uh, they went for training for uh, sustainability uh, certification. All of these tour operators are Travelize partner or even certified. Uh, a part of that, they uh, received a training on how to develop a marketing plan and marketing strategy, um, and also online presence and online participation. That was a, a, a long topic. And of course, these trainings were done online, but later on when the pandemic effects uh, were, uh, were getting a little bit better, uh, we did the trainings on site. So during uh, this, uh, this trajectory, these, uh, these specialists came up with their, uh, with their initiative, they say, uh, why not to team up? Because uh, mainly our, our, our goal, our first goal is to get Ethiopia as a travel destination back on the map. And uh, well, we don't have to, uh, to go into details, but pandemic was not their only challenge. So it's good to see that now slowly the situation becomes more stable and the country definitely, uh, the major part of this, this country is more open for travel. And good to see also that the interest from the travel industry is rising. Uh, it's really, and we can see this because we monitor this online. Uh, Ethiopia is back in the interest of not only the travel industry, but also our clients. So good to know what are the possibilities uh, for, uh, for, for traveling in Ethiopia, specifically the north of Ethiopia with all their cultural highlights. So, Happy to have uh, some specialists on board. Uh, and um, it, it's good to, um, to tell you a little bit about their campaign because they want to bring forward their beautiful country again. Um, um, and for this, um, we hired a promotional company, which is Compass, uh, and Benjamin Swak is on board. Uh, Benjamin, can you take over and inform us a little bit about the promotional campaign of this beautiful destination. Yes, of course. Thank you very much, Theo. And also from my side and my colleague, Karsten Palme, a very warm welcome here in this uh, group. And uh, I'm really happy to see uh, that so many are interested in Ethiopia, in Tigray. I'm also curious, of course, to find out more about the current situation, the first-hand impression. So I will uh, make a very brief summary of what we are doing, um, how we are communicating Ethiopia travel specialists. I'm a founding partner of Compass. We are specialized in tourism strategies and marketing based in Cologne in Germany. And yeah, we have uh, at the moment 
three different channels I would like to introduce to you. First of all, of course, um, the very first step was to build up uh, a website, ethiopiaspecialist.com, as yeah, the center, as the stage for our endorsed collective of um, Ethiopia travel specialists. Um, as you can see here, the screenshot, I highly recommend, of course, to have a look on the site. What is very special, special definitely, is uh, the fact that you really can meet the specialist. This is what you see uh, on the top left of the screenshot. Meet the specialist leads you to a database of all members of Ethiopia travel specialists um, with their uh, special focus in tourism, with their tours, with their offers, and most importantly, of course, with their con uh, contact details so you have the chance to get in direct contact with them um, to learn more about what they have to offer in tourism in Ethiopia and uh, to find a real specialist in the same way what is also important to mention is of course you see it here very prominently sustainable there is uh, there were quite some efforts taken uh, to set up um, the two operation in a sustainable manner. This is also something we promote on the website. And when we switch over to the next slide, you can see in detail uh, what we mean when you can meet the specialists. This is, there we are, in the second phase. Let's say it like this. We have a mailing list, of course. Um, so that there is a steady flow of information to all who are interested in Ethiopia and Ethiopian travel, um, news, updates, what they have on offer, their stories, what they can tell. As we see it this uh, morning um, with the pictures, with the impressions, for example, from Tigray, this is something we send out uh, via our mailing list. So also here the recommendation, if you're interested, sign up and use this uh, possibility to learn more about the Ethiopia travel specialist. And then um, I'm quite sure you already noticed it. Uh, Ethiopia travel specialist is also uh, on LinkedIn um, with a dedicated business site. Um, this is, I think, very important also to, to have um, a digital, uh, a social stage um, on a professional network. Uh, not only to connect the Ethiopia travel specialists, the members of this group among each other, but also to open up for direct communications, for offers um, uh, among the members and all who are interested in organizing trips and uh, tourism activities in Ethiopia. You see it here, the screenshot, Ethiopia travel specialist is the name and the hashtag on LinkedIn. Have a look there and you will find, of course, afterwards, after this presentation here, also some more details on what we presented today. This is a short roundup from my side. Um, now I'm really curious to find out more uh, what Mark and Marco, two M's today, uh, what they can tell us about Tigray, about the current situation, um, what their impressions were. So the stage is yours, and I'm now handing over to Mark and Marco. Thank you very much that you came today and brought some uh, insight details. Thank you. Uh, Mark, I think you, you're on mute still. On mute. There we go. OK. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm Mark Chapman, the guy in the left of the picture there. Um, in a minute, I'll hand over to Marco de Gasper on the right. Um, and we wanted to share a little bit of information about uh, our recent uh, trip into Gray. In fact, I've been up twice uh, in the last couple of months um, because uh, Tesfa Tours operates a number of community guest houses in the region, and we had been out of touch and unable to visit for a long time. So it was a relief and uh, exciting to get back up there and see that things had, had restarted. Um, before I go to the next screen, um, these are our companies, Tesfa Tours and Simeon Eco Tours. We also work um, with another member 
who's who's with us today, uh, Bogali, uh, who's uh, one of the Ride the Rift tour operators. We formed uh, a sort of joint venture during COVID, and really we staged this trip up today as Ride the Rift. So Bogali is also on the on the participants here. Um, and, uh, maybe I don't know if he can unmute for a minute and say hi. I don't know if he's able to do that. Um, hi, Bogali. You're there, right? So Bogali may be able to add a little bit of additional information as we go forward. Um, so let me go on to the um, map of Tigray. Uh, so I'm just closing various buttons so I can see here. Um, the places in Tigray you will know particularly well, perhaps, is uh, Makeli here with the red circle around, the capital of Tigray and Aksum. It's a fairly small and thin province. I've mentioned the, the bordering areas. Uh, to the east, you've got Afar region and the Danakil. Um, of course, that's interesting because vehicles for years have been traveling from Makeli to see Ertali volcano and the Dalol. Um, in the north, you've got Eritrea, and this border is really not a, a safe border to approach at this time. It's a bit unclear where the border actually is. Likewise, on the west, you have Sudan, but that's very far to the west from the tourist area. Um, and I mentioned the Simeon Mountain Park, which really comes very close to the border with, uh, with um, Tigray up in, in this area here. So from a tourist point of view in the past, tourists have traveled from the Simeons perhaps along a road that heads north to Shire and then across to Aksum where uh, you have um, the megalithic lists and some historical sites that people wanted to see. It's the cradle of the Ethiopian church, so there's a lot of sites there. Well, can people hear me okay? Yes, Mark, we, we can hear you. I, I just see there's someone who's not muted, so I just want to mute them quickly. Just a reminder to everyone that if you are on the call, please make sure that you remain muted at all times, so that we can uh, clearly hear Mark. Thanks a lot. Okay. Uh, so the other thing, apart from Axum, that uh, Tigray has been famous for, for, from a tourism perspective, is, is rock-hewn churches. And the, the most notable area is the Geralta Mountains, in white writing with this green circle around. That's the Geralta Massif where there's a, a phenomenal concentration of rock hewn churches. But actually these little names in black dotted around here are mostly other churches of, of, of quite big significance as well. And you've got other clusters. So if tourists are interested, they can spend literally days exploring churches. But from our experience seeing several rock hewn churches on it over a couple, you know, each day for a couple of days is, is, is probably enough. Um, I marked out these blocks here, Western Tigray, Southern Tigray, with the names of the sort of zone or the area written underneath. This is, if you like, a uh, disputed territory, a bit of a hot potato at the moment. Um, it was until uh, the conflict, it was part of Tigray. Now it's administered by uh, Amhara region and it's not been resolved. So these are areas we wouldn't be proposing to take clients to. But I think you can see from the map, uh, it's possible to fly into Makeli. The airport is marked here. That is a big airport and it's operational with at least five flights a day. And although Axum Airport is out of, uh, out of service at the moment, we've been assured it should be back in service by September. So until it is in service, the airport at Shire operates a couple of flights a day to Addis Ababa, so it's possible to make a trip through this uh, tourist area of Tigray um, uh, and safely fly back to Addis. Uh, hopefully sometime towards the end of this year and early next year, it will be possible to use road routes in from the Simeons and possibly out to the Danakil and maybe even out to Lalibela. Lalibela would be quite far south on this map, just probably off the map. Um, let me go on to the next, uh, the next map. Um, 
Oh, screen sharing was paused. I apologize for that. Let me resume share. Uh, okay, this is a more detailed map of the community tourism because what I propose to talk to you about today is a community trekking that uh, TESPA set up with these farming communities in this area. So uh, here you have in white a main road that comes up from Makeli, which we would be bringing people from the airport on through Edega Hamas to Adigrat, which is one of the major towns in Tigray. From here, the road heads westward towards Aksum and northwards towards Eritrea. Um, these mountains here, we call the Agami Mountains. Uh, and in these mountains, we set up a number of guest houses. I apologize because there's a lot of background information on this map that you don't need to really see. The three guest houses are marked in green. Um, Saheta Community Guest House here. Oh, I'm going to go backwards, sorry. Gogot Community Guest House and then Shimbriti Community Guest House. These three guest houses were not uh, damaged or very lightly damaged in the, during the conflict time. And the communities maintained uh, their materials, mattresses, cooking materials, cups and saucers, all that stuff and uh, are really, really excited to give a service to clients. In fact, we just had a few days ago, uh, a group of two uh, people from Brazil go trekking through here, and they stayed exactly at these guest houses. Um, there's, in this area, there's a number of interesting churches as well. The, the purple crosses are churches, and there's uh, um, four, churches that we would suggest that people could visit if they wanted to on this trip. I'll show you some of the pictures in a minute. Um, the one here next to Seheta is actually called uh, Debra Georgis and is a bit of a climb up a mountainside with uh, steps and uh, they've got these ladders lashed on, metal in some places, uh, wooden in other places. Um, it's an exciting climb and it's an intriguing little church. Uh, Gogoti Jesus is marked here. It's actually on Google Maps as well because it's quite a significant church. Um, and here you've got uh, Bahara Mariam, which has been uh, renovated or improved. So um, technical people came in recently before the conflict and they started trying to uh, clean the church and improve the... Um, uh, and improve the, the ventilation so that they were conserved. The paintings were conserved. There's beautiful paintings I'll show you. And then lastly here, uh, Mariam Buzuhan, and an intriguing rock tunnel as well. Um, the first thing I wanted to point out, and as somebody that absolutely loves trekking, is this is just a paradise for walking. You've got these uh, flat tabletop areas on the mountains. Um, You've got uh, beautiful valleys in between, red sandstone cliffs. Uh, if you've got clients that like walking, we can structure it so that you've got relatively easy walking or fairly challenging walking. Uh, when I say relatively easy, if we don't go to all of the churches and uh, have plenty of stops, um, people that are fit but not super fit will not have any problem at all. Um, but the highlight is really the contact with the communities and the local culture. Uh, and having gone back there after the conflict and after COVID, people were so excited to see us. We got told um, this is the dawn coming after the, after the night. Uh, people were so happy they'd invite us into their house. You've got a picture here of a woman making coffee in the traditional way. We were just invited into a, a, a random farmhouse and they insisted we had coffee. This is a local coffee pot, which is very different from ones in other parts of Tigray or other parts of Ethiopia. Um, and here you've got a picture of the cook team from one of the guest houses uh, who were very excited to have us with them. Um, these are the guest houses themselves. Uh, they are made to reflect the local style of, of um, construction with this uh, yellow stone, uh, flat roofs, um, 
people will build the compound with a, a wall all the way around it. But what we've done is taken down the front wall so that you have the view, which at this site at the top, Shimbriti is one of the most beautiful places in Ethiopia, staggering. This site here, Gogot, is set amongst uh, eucalyptus trees just underneath the cliff. Um, and here you have our team of guides and staff uh, with the community. Um, I think this was at, at Gogot. Just to mention, the communities own the guest houses and they run them. So they're actually getting, uh, along with the lunch they provide, 55% of the, of the uh, cost um, of the community trek goes to them. 25% goes to the guides, um, and we take 20% for doing the marketing and, and booking. Um, these are some of the churches you can see on, uh, on the visit. The top left is Mariam Bahara with these beautiful paintings. Uh, it's a 15th century church. Um, there's a, um, an inscription here which has allowed the experts to to date the church. Um, and these paintings are absolutely exquisite. Um, bottom left is a very unusual church, this Deborah Georgis, you have to climb up the mountainside. We'll see some slides for that. But uh, a lot of people thought it, it actually, because I think a priest had mentioned, it, it was uh, serving as a place of worship in pre-Christian times. So it's a very intriguing um, place indeed. It's not far from Axum, this area, and, and of course, civilization in Axum was running concurrently with the Pharaonic civilization in Egypt, um, and uh, Christianity became established uh, in the um, fourth century so, uh, and became the state religion. But prior to that, it, it was a pre Christian era, era. And in parts of Ethiopia, there was also a Judaic uh, culture that existed before. Um, Manuscripts, this is a manuscript from the Georgis church. It's actually rather gruesome when you go in close because it's about, uh, about um, uh, St. George's martyrdom. Um, and then this is a Mariam Buzuhan, which is a cave that's been opened up into an, a fabulous church with these uh, carvings on the roof. Um, it's a very small little church that only people on our treks really visit. Uh, but uh, of course, their live churches, the community go up the mountain and worship in them for all the saints' days and baptize their kids and, and so on. Um, okay, this shows you a bit of the, the landscape and the trekking. On the right is the, the steps that go up to this Deborah Georgis. There, as I said, massive lashed on ladders in places. There are steps. Um, and uh, to realize that the community climb up here to, uh, to go to church is, is, is quite incredible. Um, on the left, you have a, a rock tunnel, the Shukota rock tunnel, which is by the Mariam Buzuhan church and the Shimbriti, the last guest house. This was a tunnel carved through the mountain to allow farmers and traders and market goers to cross from the plains to the uh, west through to a market town just to the east where uh, we ended our trek. Um, and then pictures to give you a bit more of an illustration of the landscape and the local architecture, um, the way they have their oxen and the, uh, the cut hay um, drying. Um, it's a landscape full of people as well and smiles. It's often hard to get people to keep smiling when you take a picture because they want to look very serious for the picture. Um, but these kids had fantastic smiles on their faces. Um, you know, for those people that tracked the conflict and followed what was going on, uh, we were there, people are plowing the land, which is a fantastic sight because a crop is gonna go in and a crop will be harvested uh, later this year. Um, rain has been coming, so um, fantastic news for the future. And our, our main guide in the area, Burhe, we actually have a team of four or five guides at the moment, but Berhe is the head guide with a couple of the community from Shimbriti here. They were so happy to see us, Berhe and everybody. Um, so I think I'm gonna hand over here to Marco. Marco, are you there? Uh, yes, I'm connected now. Uh, 
sorry, I had some internet uh, uh, connection problems, but now hopefully it's working. Uh, but maybe you can still continue to share the slides. Uh, I just explained them. Uh, before going into it, uh, just a short uh, presentation about uh, myself. I'm uh, Marco de Gaspar, originally from from Italy, from northern Italy, uh, now living in Ethiopia and uh, leading Siemen Ecotools as manager. Siemen Ecotools is a, a travel life certified uh, tour operator. Uh, we can do the normal tours, but we are specializing uh, actually in uh, adventure tourism, uh, outdoor uh, trips. Uh, we have a, a fleet of uh, mountain bikes. Uh, we have a, a partnership with a Bulgarian paraglider, uh, so that's uh, the kind of things that uh, we know to do well. Uh, we also um, are selling this uh, community hiking trips that uh, Mark was uh, just explaining. Uh, I was personally on this uh, trip uh, as well here. Uh, and uh, yes, I'm happy to tell you something uh, about what we did uh, after these uh, four days of hiking in the Agave Mountains. So uh, we went uh, to the Geralta Mountains, which is uh, the more common part of uh, the Tigray, where the, uh, the, the most known churches are. Uh, one of them uh, is uh, Aguna Yemata Gu. Uh, it's actually the, the, the most uh, famous one, and uh, it is a special church because of the location, as you, as you see um, uh, from the images before, you need uh, to do a kind of a climbing there, uh, but uh, our guides, uh, they have uh, the equipment, the harness with the rope, so that uh, they can secure the people uh, which are not uh, feeling very comfortable in uh, climbing these uh, rock faces uh, here. But uh, uh, once that you reach the top of, uh, of these uh, walls and you go inside the church, you see on the next uh, slides, uh, uh, it is magnificent. Uh, there, there are uh, old uh, uh, paintings on the, on the walls. Uh, ancient uh, manuscripts, uh, uh, Bibles uh, that the priest is uh, showing to you. Uh, so this is uh, the most uh, uh, famous uh, church uh, all over the, the place uh, there. Um, uh, there's also documentaries uh, about it uh, of uh, uh, women, mothers, which are uh, climbing these spaces with uh, with their babies on the back here for getting baptized in this uh, church uh, here. Uh, so the, it is well documented also uh, on the internet. Okay, uh, then um, after seeing uh, some of these uh, churches here, we continue to Chuaksum, which is, uh, of course, also one of the main uh, tourist destinations uh, in Innsbruck, just to check if uh, everything is uh, well there as well. And we found uh, uh, the, on the streets of Aksum uh, that uh, the life came back uh, to normal. We have seen the Stele, uh, Stele field and uh, everything what is uh, um, yeah, and, and some other destinations uh, inside the town of Aksum. Uh, I have uh, been personally for the first time, you see it on the last uh, picture uh, on the right, the bottom side, uh, in, in that place where uh, the, uh, those who built the Aksum stelas uh, took the granite uh, blocks. Uh, it's, uh, I like that uh, particularly because it was the first time for me to visit. So it's also possible uh, to visit that. It can be combined with a, with a half an hour, one hour uh, walk, uh, very interesting. And uh, what we did uh, then on uh, just before our departure from Maxum <laughs> is to see a small uh, monastery a small church called the uh, Abba we, which is on this uh, uh, on the top of the hill that you see in the uh, top left corner. Here uh, you need uh, to walk up uh, there as well, half an hour, maximum of one hour. And uh, I like uh, particularly the photo which, which is just uh, under that one, where you see uh, Mark and our guide uh, Fitzum uh, waiting patiently until the uh, priest is issuing the receipt. Uh, that took a lot of time, uh, between five to maybe even 10 minutes, because uh, the priest did not issue any receipt for the past uh, three years. And uh, so it was a bit uh, difficult. Uh, the, the, the priest also has a certain age, and so he, had, uh, he needed the help of some other people to make order among the receipts, and then finally to issue the receipt uh, for us. Uh, to, to go up on the top of the hill to see these uh, churches, uh, the, the, the church, which you can uh, see here on the right side, uh, uh, beautifully, very, very colorful inside, as you see from the picture. Okay, and then I added also one slide uh, um, to talk uh, a little bit about uh, uh, the situation of the hotels and uh, the lodges in Tigray. 
uh, the free pitch, the free pictures on the top uh, are all taken from the Geralda Lodge. It's, uh, I, I think, the most uh, famous famous lodge uh, in whole Tigray, uh, run by uh, Italians. Um, and it's a beautiful place. Uh, some uh, want to visit the Tigray only to uh, to stay some nights there in Geralta Lodge, uh, but it has unfortunately been uh, looted. Luckily, only looted and not really destroyed. So the structure, as you see here, is mostly intact. Okay, some windows have been broken uh, and so on. Um, we know the owners uh, there, and uh, they are planning to open the lodge again. Uh, they already employed uh, uh, six of the guards, which are currently there. They're traveling to Tigray, and hopefully in the coming months they can operate the lodge already, maybe uh, at least uh, for, for the basic services or with, with a reduced uh, capacity. Um, the Corco Lodge, which is next to it, has been uh, partially damaged or looted uh, as well. Uh, so especially in that area around Hausian, there might be a shortage of accommodation because uh, um, if this uh, lodge is uh, here, uh, together with some other accommodation, cannot uh, be used, uh, yeah, th there might be this uh, shortage, but we also do not expect a huge amount of uh, visitors uh, for the next uh, season. So I, th I think we are fine as long as we uh, book in advance. Um, but for the rest of what we have noticed in Axum and in Mekele, there's plenty of accommodations and they are all running well. This, uh, you, you, you see here, the last uh, two photos, that's a, new, uh, a completely new hotel in, uh, in Axum called uh, Agranos. Um, fully operational, so we are not worried about the accommodation uh, in the other places uh, like uh, the bigger cities. Okay, with this, uh, I would like to thank you and give uh, back uh, the, the word to Benjamin or Pio. I don't know if it's taking over. Marco, yeah. can I just say, uh, just um, to make it clear, actually in Hausen, which is neighboring uh, the Geralta churches, and it's actually where Geralta lodges, there is uh, one, one very good hotel in the town. So for the moment, it, although these uh, very high level lodges have been damaged, um, we stayed in a very acceptable uh, hotel with you know, hot, hot shower, um, clean brand new beds, uh, clean rooms, uh, fantastic breakfast. We ate in a restaurant next door and had a, a wonderful, it was Ethiopian food, but really good lunch. So, I mean, I, I don't have a problem to take clients at this time from uh, the accommodation. It's just that these specialist lodges are missing, but there's a perfectly good uh, lodge unless you have people who are extremely uh, keen to stay high end. People that want to see places like Abuna Yamato Goh and the other churches, yeah. the core churches, they will be very happy with this hotel. Okay. So from our side, I think that's um, uh, that's the main part we wanted to ask um, and give you as information. But we'd be really happy if there's any questions. Um, if we left out any information that you wanted, we'll be very happy to answer questions. Marco. Hey, people. And Marge, thank you. Tio, Tio, are you are you online still? Are you there? Uh, of course, I'm online. But, uh, All right. I, I, but I was I was quiet because I was impressed by these beautiful pictures. I mean, it is really breathtaking and 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 really good to see that such an endangered area has come back into let's say sort of business. You know? I mean, we're all in tourism, and 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 this is in our heart. We want to 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 see and to show this to our clients. If it is possible, if it is safe, you know. So that is that's the main question. I don't know if there are some 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 questions in the audience. Uh, please uh, switch on your mic. We try to. Yo, there's a question it. from Garum Abera on the chat. All oh, right, good. Now, the link between the Danakil and uh, Tigray and the possibility, uh, because I mentioned it at the beginning, so. Uh, while I said uh, in the past, people have accessed the Danakil area through McKelly. Um, at the moment, that that uh, is not possible, but everyone's anticipating that to become an option again in the coming weeks or months. Certainly, uh, before the end of the year, I, I, I'm pretty sure it will be. But uh, meanwhile, there's the option for people to fly into the capital of uh, Afar Samera, 
and trips are run from there. Um, so that's, uh, if anyone was interested, I think that answers Gurun's question. Is, is that okay, Gurun? Okay, I don't see any reaction from that, so I guess it's okay. Um, you mentioned that there are uh, regular flights now from uh, from from Addis. So I mean, uh, Aksum Airport uh, is, is is still not operational, but uh, I mean, there. Yes, Marco, please. Uh, yes, yes, I, I'm updated about the flight schedule. So uh, before uh, Corona and the war, there have been uh, seven daily flights to to Mekelle. At the moment, there are five flights, so they reached almost the capacity already. Or what is needed there. Uh, Aksum Airport is closed, that's uh, true. Uh, Ethiopian uh, Airlines is uh, pushing, of course, uh, to open uh, that airport, and uh, they are probably uh, doing it at the beginning of the new Ethiopian year, which is uh, September, mid of September. <clears throat> but in the meanwhile, just a two hours a drive from Aksum, there's the Shire Airport, which is a small airport, so lower capacity, but it's uh, still, uh, but, but this is operational. That's actually where we flew back here after our trip. And uh, there's uh, one daily flight at least, and on two days of the week, there's uh, two flights. So you, you, you have the options uh, to fly uh, in and out, uh, both uh, from and to Mekele and the Shire, which is uh, one, one in the east, uh, one in the west of uh, Digai. So it gives you uh, enough options, I think. Very good. I mean, that answers the question from one of the uh, participants now. Um, now, from a touristic perspective, I mean, yes, you showed me the beautiful pictures and, and, and really exciting to, to, to go there. Um, is it actually from a tourism perspective, what is open for travel? What is open to, for, uh, for, for, for tourist travel? I mean, of course we know it is still, it will still be a little bit explorative. Uh, this is not a, a regular tour, uh, but tours are possible. Which areas are worth to be seen? Theo, are you talking across the whole of Ethiopia or specific? No, I'm specifically for this part. Well, I mean, there were really only the 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 um, the areas I outlined in the presentation there. The area around Axum, which is very specific. Uh, there's um, the obelisks. There's two uh, areas where the the main obelisks are, the big ones, and then a smaller park out to the side. We went up onto the hill behind the smaller group of obelisks and behind a palace, which is named as the Queen of Sheba's Palace. And we went up there to see where they had cut out these huge granite blocks of stone, mm. which were, I think, something like 60 tons, and dragged mm. them across the landscape to uh, uh, put them up, erect them in, in, the, in the main part of the town. So that's yeah. easy to visit. Then the Abba Pantheon uh, Monastery that Marco talked you through um, uh, is also an option. And the, the main church is uh, there in, in the center of Axum by the obelisks. Uh, Marian Sion, uh, which I, I think most uh, most guests would want to want to see, um, and above the obelisks, there's a um, one of several burial chambers, um, which is a Caled burial chamber, and it's probably the best place to see this massive stone um, architecture, which I'm intrigued by the the means by which people cut this granite, which I mean, is not easily cut into mm. perfect shapes, but they're not square there. When you go in and you see them, they have all kinds of angles and they fit perfectly with the blocks above and the blocks to the side. Um, but Mark, just just sorry to interrupt you. What yeah. are there any visible traces of this, let's say, dark period you see, uh, which are, of course, I mean, your tourists, your guests, especially the first comers now, they know what happened there. Um, and and when I when I mentioned open for travel, it is I mean, of course I mean what is what is still uh, a reminder of that uh, of that period, which is let's say not for tourism purposes. Um, you don't see a lot that is obvious in front of your face when you ask your guide questions and go behind the front, like uh, factories have been bombed. Um, and the, and looted. So, uh, you know, you see the front of a factory, might be a marble factory outside, you know, on the way between Aksum and uh, Shire. Uh, we drove past it and it's like 
that's been bombed. Um, there was a, another uh, factory that made uh, you know, cotton garments that was also bombed. And these factories aren't operational now. So if you want, as a, as a tourist, if you want to ask the details, the guides will be very keen to give you the background. But it's not like you see burnt out here and potholes there. There's a few uh, destroyed tanks on the road between Makeli and Shire um, that we saw, uh, or armored vehicles or whatever that have been that have been destroyed. Um, we saw a little bit of uh, of the uh, local military, the TDF, on the move on trucks and stuff, but incredibly well disciplined, no feeling of any threat, um, and yet. The biggest thing that I think people will feel is that uh, the, the, their hosts, whether they're priests or they're in the hotel or their guides, are so happy to have them back. They, they say they're not really worried about making money. They just want to see things coming back. So you're going to, your, your guests coming there are going to get um, a little bit emotional because people are just so happy to see them back after a dark period of three years. Um, people don't want to talk too much about the worst things that happened and the dark excesses of those three years. Uh, they want to focus more on the future um, and, and, and things coming back. So, uh, I mean, yeah, people have to accept the reality. They're coming to a country that was hit by war in a region that was pretty devastated and still has a lot of problems. But I think on top of that, um, they, they're going to have an extremely uh, warm welcome and they're going to feel really loved and, and wanted. Great, great, great. Uh, that, that are really messages from the field. There's another question coming up. Um, Mark, Marco, how are the guides? Uh, are they, are they, how are the service people? Are they eager for the money like in the past, when, in the good times, you know, when, or are they more friendly and, well, you, you already mentioned it more or less. Yes, it's. Uh, I can just uh, repeat what Mark already said. Uh, the same. Uh, what uh, is valid for the locals is also valid for the for the guides. So they are very happy uh, to see to, uh, tourists. Maybe even more because uh, they uh, they were working with the tourists. But it it is uh, again not that much about uh, the money, but uh, about uh, giving them a sign of uh, hope uh, uh, that uh, tourists will uh, come back here and uh, they will get uh, more work uh, in the future. So that's exactly what Mark already said. Uh, and uh, yeah, sometimes, uh, like he said, uh, really emotional. So I expect also to get uh, hugged uh, by, by someone there because uh, that's uh, also that, uh, yeah, what, uh, uh, what we uh, got this impression uh, they are the, uh, um, yeah, that everyone is uh, so happy. Uh, so somewhere using uh, really, uh, yeah. Uh, nice expressions like uh, now we we are, we are really seeing the dawn or something like this i mean i i do not speak uh the green a little bit of harik uh, yes but uh, this is how <coughs> the, the our team members have uh, translated it uh, to us so sometimes uh, even uh, we ourselves uh, got emotional when we had uh, this kind of experiences so the, the the guides of course they are ready there are there are plenty of uh, guides uh, even if uh, some of them uh, maybe found another work or moved uh, to Addis or to other places. Uh, but for the amount of tourists that we expect uh, for next year, um, uh, we will have uh, definitely enough uh, good uh, local guides there. Great. And did you feel yourself safe? That's another question, uh, and, and especially outside the, uh, let's say, the, the, the urban areas. Uh, do you need uh, special security uh, to, to go there? You need special permissions to travel certain roads or what was it? I, I always uh, felt 100% uh, safe. Uh, uh, we, uh, we had uh, just because uh, we have uh, good connections, of course, uh, uh, with the Ministry of Tourism. Uh, we had a, a letter from them, which, uh, but it, it's not strictly necessary to have that letter. It's just uh, uh, in, in case uh, um, uh, of uh, uh, roadblocks, it, uh, it's helping a bit more, but it, uh, it's, I'm sure it's working also without uh, this letter. Anyway, if we have uh, clients, uh, we are always uh, uh, able to provide uh, any kind of uh, letter, but uh, there is actually no special permission needed uh, uh, to do that. Can I, um, I'll, I'll pick up on that as well, because I, I traveled maybe a month before we went with a group, uh, just with myself and uh, 
my uh, old friend and guide Burhe through the community tourism area and then on to Hausen to meet um, our guide there, Gebre, who is uh, one trained in rock, uh, rock climbing that Marco mentioned and can provide harnesses. A anyway, I mean, they uh, walking through the countryside at that point, uh, the TDF uh, were billeted in farm houses. So I came across a lot of, of these uh, sort of um, military. They didn't carry their guns, they're very disciplined. They only carry guns when they're on a sort of mission. Um, and the change between that month and then the next month, by the time we came back, they were no longer billeted around the countryside, they weren't there. But the whole area felt extremely safe. I mean, ironically, uh, I would say from a tourist point of view, like doing a trip as we did, Makeli up through these uh, mountains, see the rock hewn churches in Geralta and to Axum, I think I feel safer than almost anywhere else in Ethiopia at the time. Um, because it just felt really, really secure. I saw someone posted a note um, because some of the sites outside Axum, uh, Kaleb Tomb, the palace, do you need to have security? No, not at all. We went up to Kaleb Tomb and uh, there were three priests. Uh, for those that are not familiar in Ethiopia, they've got white turbans on, big, uh, they carry their hand crosses and they gave us hugs, uh, which is not normal priest behavior. They, they hugged us, they were so happy to see us. Um, I would love if uh, Bogali could say something uh, about, because Bogali, um, who is uh, in the group here, he was with us. And obviously Marco and I are Ferengis, although we've been living here between us for almost 50 years, I think. But um, Bogali you are. is Ethiopian and uh, speaks uh, Amharic and knows the church and has a lot of friends that he's had from, you know, from the church. And he spent a lot of time with some of the clergy there. So if it would be useful, I think, Bogali, could you tell people your bit of experience? Bogali, your mic is open now. I don't know if you have a good connection. Can you hear us? I think we might have a technical problem. Let's leave, leave that till Bogali. Yeah, I think so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks. All right, any other questions? I can see, sorry, Tio, I can see in the chat, Bogali, I can see your chat message saying you're trying to speak. I can also see that you're unmuted. Um, I'm just confirming we, we don't get any audio from you. So I'm assuming it's maybe a connection issue. Sorry about that. Um, you can maybe keep trying, keep yourself unmuted. If we do hear you, we'll, we'll open the floor for you. Other option might be just to add some short notes in the chat. We can distribute that later. Thank you. I think so. There's another question coming in. Uh, did you have the chance to ask about the Danakil route? Because it is one of the entry points to Dalo in the Salta Sale. Um, Mark? I mean, one of, our, one of our close friends, he used to be a guide on the community tourism, um, was uh, trying to uh, get that route opened up. So, I mean, there, there's a lot of talk. Uh, of course, you know, the conflict was a bit um, severe in some places on the borders between Afar and Tigray. So as we understood, it's going to take a little bit of time just to smooth those relationships, make sure everything is, uh, is good. Um, but uh, from some of the officials, police officials and so on, they were getting the green light to start doing this. I think it could take, like I said, you know, now is not the season to go to the Danakil anyway. It's the hottest time. Mm -hmm. um, then it starts raining in the highlands, floods come down. Uh, I would understand that, uh, the season will probably start again in October. Um, by then, I think we could well have the option to operate trips out of uh, Makeli, which will be great because you can, as a, a tour operator, you can link these wonderful things that Marco and I were describing with this adventure to the Danakil, which is generally a two night, three day trip, um, and then come back up to Makeli and fly back to Addis from there. It's much shorter than the one from Samera that we're operating at the moment. 
yeah, I can imagine. But okay, it's it's very good to to hear from you that you are realistic in this, and I think that is one of the uh, one of the topics I would like to emphasize. Uh, it's being you know the Ethiopian specialist. You are the specialist following up from your side. I mean, you know exactly what is safe and what is good to travel, uh, and and following up the actual situation. So that could be in favor opening up for certain areas, certain routes. But also, if certain roads or certain routes are not open for travel, let's call it this way, then you will find an alternative, knowing what to do, and, and, and let's say for the benefit and the sake of your clients, uh, and 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 that and that is good. I mean, that is something which is uh, showing your professionalism, and that's also a good reason for uh, for clients, for your clients, to choose one of the Ethiopian specialists. 